folks, the 29th of June 2020. Little bit of chat about nutrition on the beat. I said we, we covered herbicides earlier on there. This is Enermax, as I said, sown the 13th of April. Got an inch of rain before the 1st of May. It only got eight mil of rain in May and it's got 36 mil of rain this June so far. The beet has actually done remarkably well considering how dry it was. The field is looking well. In terms of nutrition, as I said, just a reminder, this is all about building yield. This beet has grown on farmyard manure and 120 units of urea. That's the only granular fertilizer it gets. Artificial fertilizer is 120 units of urea. All the P and K comes from the dung. To put it in perspective, a 30 ton crop of beet will remove with the tops well, it requires about 20 units of phosphorus and about 80 units of potash for this. But to grow the top, it'll take in the region of 50 to 60 units of phosphorus and almost 400 units of potash. So a huge amount of nutrition goes into the tops. A lot of people throw on a lot of nitrogen, but up here is largely about potash. This field across the weed sprays that it's got has got full rate manganese got approximately full rate of magnesium it's got two half rates and a full rate of uplift and it's got at the moment the equivalent of five liters of grow plan b which is our boron which has molybdenum in it i spend a lot on foliar nutrition because i know it gives me the yield what we're going to finish with here to try and boost the yield as much as we can we're going to come back in about two ish weeks going to come back 10th to 15th of july thereabouts it's going to get another full rate of uplift because i'm a huge fan of it i know what it does the uplift maximizes the efficiency of the nitrogen that's been taken up by the beet it will get another three liters of grow plan b because late boron deficiency seems to be increasing in prevalence in the country and again i've no boron put on through a compound i'm also going to give it it's the first time i've done it actually here i'm going to give it a product called peloton which we actually sell for maize it's phosphorus potash magnesium and a bit of zinc. Now the zinc isn't overly important for, for the beet, but the magnesium I do require more here, and the phosphorus and the potash will hopefully give another kick. Again, the product is Peloton, uh, five uh, liters five. per hectare. It'll get the uplift as well. It'll also get more boron. But in terms of fungicide, which is critical, I'll use a Scalta and I'll use it twice. A Scalta is cyproconazole and trifloxystrobin. Roughly, I know I, I try and avoid usually talking about the cost because it's up to yourselves where you're spending your money and how much you spend on an input. But if I go for a very high bar here, 0.35 litres per hectare of Escalta will cost you potentially the, the, the price of a tonne of washed beet. About 45 quid a tonne I'm taking the price of beet at. If you put on one spray of 0.35 Escalta over, I think it's seven years of trials, the average increase is 6.7 tonnes per hectare from one application of 0.35 that's only costing you one tonne of beet. So for one, you get 6.7. But if you put a second application of Escalta on, you'll get another 4.8 tonne per hectare. That's the average over a lot of years trials. So Escalta would be the number one choice as your fungicide it covers the four main diseases, rust, ramularia, powdery mildew, and uh, circospora. So again, foliar nutrition and two fungicides is what I'll finish to feel the beet off with again to push for maximum yield. <laughs>